Hi, I'm Victoria and I'm a freelance surface pattern designer. I'm going to be releasing a series of mini videos just to share with you some of the tips that I've learned using Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, this will be really useful if you're just starting, starting out in surface pattern design, just learning to bring your hand drawn elements from your sketchbook or any kind of mark making that you've done into the computer and digitizing it. So in this video, I'm going to look at that first initial process and I use the levels and the contrast functions in Photoshop. These are really useful for me because it means I can get a really nice clean line to the edge of your motif or the mark making that you've done. And this is important because it means that you can then copy it from Photoshop into Illustrator nicely, you have less kind of tidying up to do, but also it means it's then much easier to then edit that design, whether it's changing the colours or manipulating it further. So let's get started. So the first step of playing with levels and contrast in Photoshop is to open up the image that you're working on. Now this can be from a photo, it can be a scanned image, um, of any kind of mark making or motifs that you've drawn um, or it can be a photo that you've taken of your sketchbook page or your motifs that you've drawn and actually I worked that way for a really long time and using the levels in Photoshop really helped me get rid of some of the shadowing I'd often get if I'd taken a photograph of my sketchbook page. When I'm doing my original kind of artwork and drawing I like to use different inks, I've got ink work here um, like a, a marker pen that I've used and then I also like to kind of add different line qualities around some of my motifs just because I find that then when I'm developing this into a repeat pattern it always adds a little bit more detail which adds a bit more depth and texture to the final design. So once you're ready and you've opened up your image that you want to work on the first thing I do is always duplicate my bottom layer and the easiest way to do this is by pressing command J. Just get rid of my history panel. So select the layer and then Command J to duplicate. I'll then turn the bottom layer off. Now the reason why I do that is so I always have an original preserved in its original format, just because sometimes I might have to come back and re-edit it in a slightly different way for a different um, design. And I just don't ever want to lose some of that original hand-drawn quality. <clears throat> So then once you've turned that layer off and you're on the correct layer that you want to work on, if you just go up to your adjustments panel here and you can see brightness and contrast and levels. Now these are the two that I like to work with. So we'll just have a quick look at the contrast first and this is quite a quick easy one and often you can get a really nice line to the edge of your motif that you're working on just by upping the contrast. But if we turn it right down you'll see that it sort of really pales the design slightly com in comparison to turning it right up and it gets really dark. So this one you'd probably be able to copy pretty easily straight into Illustrator without going any further but you might want to change the level so you can get a nicer line quality on some of these more inky marks here. I'm just going to knock that down slightly and again this is completely personal preference it depends on the overall look that you want for your very final um, repeat pattern that you're developing. <clears throat> so if you go back into adjustments and select levels, I really like using these eyedropper tools. Now this has actually already got a really white background so you won't see much difference when you use the white eyedropper but if you have imported it from a photograph and you have a bit of shadowing using the white eyedropper works really well because you can select it and then select a darker area of your white paper and if you click on it you can just see very slightly on this one how it starts to eliminate some of that white, uh, some of that kind of shaded section on the white background. My computer's actually a little bit slow. <clears throat> and then the same is with the black eyedropper. So if you select the black eyedropper and then select a dark area of the black it helps to kind of balance those levels out and gives you a really nice line. So let's go with this one first of all. It's, it's very dark and you can just see how it's changed there. <clears throat> the other thing that's quite nice to do is to play with the slider bar here and you can get a slightly different effect there as well. But for the purpose of this, I actually want that quite dark because 
In the next video, what we're going to look at is how you can make a selection of your motifs. You can just see that you have a kind of a, that area there that's still showing, which you might want to get rid of. But actually, I think for the moment, we can make a selection really nice and easily with what we've got. So we'll leave it there. And then just to finalise, when you want to uh, finish off and save that, what I like to do is I select all of my layers and I just make sure that I merge these down. So essentially I'm applying the contrast level that I set and I'm applying the levels layer that I set. And then merge layers. And then just to have a quick look at the difference, turn that on. And you can just see how just by very quickly playing with that levels and contrast, you can get a much cleaner line that you can then work with when you go to bring your motifs into Illustrator.